Okay, we have been um, working with awakening. That's one aspect. Another aspect, which is being. And um, it all refers to the hidden treasure that desired to be known. Well, to be known is just one of the desires. The more important one is to be. And uh, uh, I think the hadith is incomplete. Uh, you know, the Sufis are always um, making variations on it. And the variation that I think is, um, I was a latent bounty and desired to um, actualize the potentialities within my being. And therefore I um, spread them into space and uh, unfolded them or deployed them in time. And thus I became in all beings the fulfillment, the extension and the fulfillment of my being. And that is how uh, the being of splendor became all of us. And there are two stages recognized by the Sufi. You see the Nafas Rahman, which is the breath, that is uh, spirit, is breath, of course. The breath of life manifests in two stages. One is Fayd Akdas, and the one next one is Fayd Mukadas. Fayd Akdas, that is where... In the beginning there was who uh, God uh, intelligent himself in a knowledge that did not require manifestation. And then the, the first emanation, Akdas, Fide Akdas, God contemplates his qualities prior to their becoming a being. Or let's say prior to, as they're moving towards manifestation, they constitute the dual Jalal Valdekram, the being of majesty and glory, is like the eternal model. And then there's Faid al Mukadas, and then God discovers himself in all creatures. Dul Jalal Valikram. And at that time we contemplate a most magnificent being like the model of humanity. The Lord of Majesty and Splendor. Like the King of Kings, it's glorious and so glorious that when he has to veil himself, lest you would be shattered by his splendor, and that veil is the veil of my arm. It's a protection. It is more than most people can take. It's so incredible. How oh, one could cry, one could scream, one could one could dance, one one could perhaps even laugh. One doesn't know. It's uh, just too much for the human being to be able to take when um, this vision comes through. It's like the only thing that makes sense, like the whole of world, life to it seemed to be. Of course, it was very disappointing because, well, it wasn't, it wasn't it. And this is it. Whereas one is desperately seeking for a being of splendor, where is one going to find a being of splendor? 
in in life on the planet yes there are rishis there are devishes there are wonderful beings but where is one going to find the dual Jalal Varakram well it would not be me, for me to say because there's immediately the danger of um, idolatry and perhaps the answer is you have to be it yourself or you have to manifest that being yourself to, to that rishi he said why have you come so far to see what you should be and of course um, to manifest oneself one would like to see it and how can I say this amongst the propensities that I talked about that are in the depth of our being there's the ability to perceive the Dul Jalal Valakram. It's um, what the Sufis call a reality for the soul, whereas it's not a reality for the body, um, because it's a reality beyond time and space, and it's not even a reality for the mind, because the mind is somewhere caught up between the two. Uh, we have been um, working with awakening. And that's one aspect. It's like the story of um, St. Peter when he took the, his, the disciple of Christ to the Mount Tabor with the hope of having a vision of Christ and nobody saw anything. And then he said, Do not see with your eyes see with the eyes of your soul and then each person had a vision but each person's vision was different and then they thought that they were just imagining things because otherwise they would have thought they would have all seen the same thing one saw jesus as a, boy, as a baby the others uh, preaching on mount of olives the others transfigured everyone saw differently and then they were very confused and very disappointed. And then St. Peter said, Talem eum vidi qualem potri. Each one of them saw according to his capacity of seeing. So the dul jalal valakram can appear to you according to your capacity of receiving his soul into your soul. So you will project upon him a picture of perfection such as you can imagine it but um, his perfection is all as far greater than anything that one could ever predict so that his light is mightier than a thousand suns that's just a metaphor isn't it and his peace is beyond any peace that one has ever experienced and his power is beyond any power that one could ever imagine and this magnificence is beyond anything that we could ever not only that we've ever experienced on the planet but that we could ever even imagine I would be curious to see whose image comes to you spontaneously but not as he was on earth far beyond that but relevant to our time yes that's true of God the sacredness of the being of God the majesty of the being of God the outcome of continual contemplation of the being of God 
and also particularly contemplation on the fact that the being of God longs for fulfillment in a being who manifests his being. Or let's say in a part of himself that is able better to manifest his being than any other part of himself. Once we have this image, one will naturally project an image, and then one has to reach beyond the image, like the feeling of majesty beyond a majestic walk, for example, or majestic dominion, or splendor beyond light, for example. the power of the spirit rather than the power of the personality. And now we're getting into it, yes, now we're getting there. It is uh, like uh, when Shamsa Bridge says, um, I am the nameless and the formless. That's getting to the original state, and God is contemplating all his qualities. is important is to experience our affiliation. It's like I am the son of God or I am the daughter of God. That is those qualities are in me, in you, in each of us. In fact, we are these qualities. They're not just in us, we are them. We are the being of God, extended, limited, and yet, as I said, there's this kind of a, a refusal of the divine perfection to let itself be limited. Now, we see it as limitation from the divine point of view. There's no limitation. Uh, from a certain angle, one could see it like the Zoroastrians do, that uh, what, if there is any limitation, it's short-lived. Divine perfection will always prevail. That's the meaning of kaza, and kader, kaza. So we too have to acknowledge and yet refuse to allow that any limitation to subsist permanently. We accept it, and yet somehow we refuse to let it be a permanent situation. So we accept our persons, yes, our limitations, but we do not um, wallow in them, we do not um, um, 
accept them as being uh, inevitable or irrevocable. So that's the meaning of, that's the ultimate optimism. Uh, the, the divine mind never takes no as an answer. The world for the divine mind, the word impossible does not exist. So that is Wahabu. The Dul Jalal Valkram is now flowing into the jagged ends of the being of God that we are. Like the blood circulates right into the nails and then the hair. <coughs> Somehow it's clogged up there, but it somehow there's some way of communicating um, food and uh, air to the hair and the nails, the jagged ends. where there's alienation from the core state. The divine nature is very sparsely uh, distributed in the jagged ends. And now there's what we were doing is we're encouraging the flow of the the being of majesty into the jagged ends. That's Wahabo is the flow. It's coming through, it's overcoming the constraint of limitation. And then we have Vujud, and that is God has become a reality in me. It was all potentially there, and now it's become real, it's become tangible. So this is the sequence of the Wazifas in get into this, um, we're going to have to do each one of them separately first, and then we'll combine them again.
our Father, and we carry his inheritance in us, and maybe we did not give much scope to all of that bounty because we did not um, concentrate very much on our magnificent Father. And we got ourselves uh, caught up in all kinds of things, and now we, like the prodigal son, we return to our father again. Uh, I don't mean externally, but um, we discover that we have in us the same thing. Was it power? Was it glory? Was it majesty? Was it light? Was it love, compassion, insight, ecstasy, purity, truth? Everything and more still. 
And all that we have to do now is to let this um, inheritance flow, as it has, as I said, in the jagged ends, come through, and find that being in ourselves, coming through. Yeah, Stop your moment. Um, do not try to concentrate on the sound now. That was in the preparatory stages. But um, on the condition of the heart, um, I've been talking about um, power, that's true, but. Um, Only if one loves very strongly, then um, divine love manifests as power. So by concentrating on the sound, which of course is powerful, one can uh, lose one's um, connection with them, um, with the heart. Uh, that is the danger whenever one is doing a powerful practice. And so just think that the being of majesty and splendor it gives the appearance of great strength. But deep down there is so much sensitivity. There's so much compassion. One's heart is bleeding and at the same time victorious and jubilating but at the same time bleeding. See it must come, I think it's just that the energy must come from a very deep place in your soul where you're being shattered and out of that shattering comes all that energy and, and strength and power. Mm -hmm.
see that it has to say Vahabo very fast because that um, triggers off very uh, active um, energy. It is, as I say, the circulation of the blood of the divine being to the jagged ends and uh, it's carrying all that bounty through. But it's got to be very active to be able to reach into that um, the bog, let's say, where this uh, energy has been become stagnant. It's the river that carries all that richness down with it. Well, the blood that carries, of course, the all the food. Now there's the word wujud, which um, of course very challenging because, um, as you know, in Islam, um, the idea of God incarnating is uh, repugnant. Christ is the incarnation of God. Well, I think that. Um, one doesn't need to say that one incarnates God, it is God who incarnates. And who um, refuses to brook of any limitation by incarnating divine perfection in conditions that are limiting, but never accepting limitation. Somehow, it's like um, Christ on the cross would never Now, we're always um, invoking excuses for not being what we would like to be, or that we are, as a matter of fact. We say, if circumstances were more propitious, then we could. Or then, of course, sometimes we say that we are, um, in our nature, we are um, um, inadequate, so that is um, accepting limitation. That's cringing. I remember that saying of Mushid, I will accept no refusal. I'll not take no for an answer, that's what it means. That is the condition for entering into limiting circumstances. To accept that one is, to decide that one is not going to allow oneself to be limited in one's, in one's sense of identity. The hands and feet may be tied, but one is still perfect. It's like that man who had a limb um, amputated and he said to me, I feel in my limb that's amputated. Uh, don't, uh, I never accepted that I don't have a limb there. It's just that the physical limb isn't there, but the um, uh, limb is still there. So that's the image of Vujud. It's the triumph of your divinity over your humanity. Okay, accepting humanity, but not as a permanent uh, or as a obstacle or as a handicap or anything like that. And accepting one's weaknesses, one's defects and so on, but not as being permanent, as being a temporary condition, uh, a condition of the transient world. But it is transient, can be overcome. Like we hear in the prison of conscience camps where people are not just tortured, but uh, uh, they try to humiliate people in their sense of dignity, wear down their spirit. And the whole test, and there are some great heroes amongst them who can see that. That's where they're being tested and never allow their spirit to be humiliated. Because then you've lost everything. Never start 
saying, deprecating yourself, like saying, well, I'm not up to much, and um, I'm a very insignificant creature, and I'm not all the things, you know, that one says about oneself. It's a kind of um, a principle that one has to follow never to say that, because by saying that one is um, reducing one's image to the um, limitation and not recognizing the divine perfection in one. It's ungracious to the divine gift. It's not accepting one's the total person, only identifying with a part of the person. So it's all right to be humble as long as one has pride. Now, humility is, of course, be realistic and uh, not to assume, let's say, to attribute divinity to one's humanity. Like the Pharaoh, for example, who thought he was God, but he attributed divinity to his person. That's where humility comes in. But one can be humble as long as one is always proud of one's divine inheritance. It's a strange combination. It's only, as I say, it's, a, it's not a compromise. It's a reconciliation of irreconcilables. Son or the daughter of that that Lord of um, majesty and splendor. And that no one can take away from him. And I should never forget it. And any time I can call upon those qualities to come through, because they are there, they're, per they're permanently there. The imperfections are not permanent, the perfections are permanent. They're potential, but permanent. Potential means that they are there. So it's not like flowing in like Mahabo, they're flowing in from the being. No, they are there. Uh, the only way to unearth them is to become aware of them. It's the only way. Make God a reality. Ya Buju Ya Buju Ya Buju Ya Buju Ya Buju Ya Buju is affirming God's existence in me instead of my existence. Ya Buju Ya Vujud, 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 Ya Wujud, 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 ya wujud. Ya Wujud 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 Ya 
Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Ya Jude. Now I think time is right now for you to go on your own and uh, do these practices now for some until um, you call for lunch.